What is up, party people? It's Dan, your basement guitar superstar. This is another segment of Shop Spotlight, and I am here with my new friend Thad Shoemaker. How's it going, guys? At Shoemaker Guitar Works here in Davenport, Iowa. Thad, thanks for having me. No problem. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks um, for coming in. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk to Thad about his shop. I'm going to give you a little shop tour, and then uh, we'll do some other stuff. But Thad, for people that haven't heard of you before, like I hadn't up until about five months ago, yeah. um, fill them in kind of on what your musical background is. Um, well, I've been playing guitar since I was seven, played piano before that. Uh, um, my grandpa and I, when I was a young kid, my grandpa was a, a self-trained luthier. And when I was a kid, we used to go around to auctions and uh, estate sales and stuff like that and pick up old fiddles and banjos and guitars and stuff that uh not unlike something like this uh uh this 1932 harmony uh that you know needs some work but it's a it's a savable guitar sure. and uh he would uh you know then fix them and uh uh he'd teach me he taught me how to you know take the back off of a fiddle and how to uh uh carve a new sound soundboard for the fiddle and stuff like that, you know, at a very young age. I mean, I was probably 10, 8, 10 years old, something like that, when we were doing this kind of stuff, nice. you know. So uh, I've been exposed to this stuff pretty much my whole life and uh, built my first guitar in uh, in wood shop in, in high school, and I was really high, and it was a horrible guitar. But, you know, it, it's one of those things, you know. Oh, sure. But, but it's still still part of my claim to fame, I guess. And then... Uh, you still have uh, it? No, I've still got parts for it, but okay. I ended up burning the body at one oh, point geez. because it, it was, was that it bad. was that bad. Yeah, oh, wow. like I, I made it playable and stuff. I used an old Tysco neck and uh, some uh, uh, mismatched uh, bridge, and it, yeah, it just it played, but not not well at all, you know. And uh, I, looking back, I kind of wish I would have kept it, uh, you know, at least for a wall hanger or whatever for the nostalgia of it. But you know, uh, so. Long story short, here uh, I've been doing this stuff out of my basement for quite a few years, and uh, uh, so two years ago, uh, I was miserable at my job. I was a career millwright for uh, a big local corporation here, and hated my job, hated the people I worked with, you know, and it, it was making my life miserable at home and at work and whatever, and uh, so I quit cashed in my 401k and started uh, to, to live my dream. And uh, uh, so I, I started this on a, kind of a whim and a prayer, you know, and uh, uh, quit uh, quit a $30 an hour career job, you know, to, to come here and do this. But uh, I've never been happier in my life. Unfortunately, 2020 has kind of sucked, you know, with the whole COVID thing. But right. uh, we're going to make it through. And uh, I... We're not going anywhere, and I get to work on beautiful guitars like this uh, Marauder here that I just did for you. So, right. um, the, you know, this I, I I just converted it over to uh, from this humbucker to the P90 like it was supposed to be. And whoever did this, they they were creative enough to uh, make this uh, adapter plate and everything for it. So that's kind of cool, you know. But uh, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it, it's a labor of love, and you know I, I make guitars when I get a chance to. Uh, that's one of those things where the the repairs and the the uh, the restoration work that I do is my bread and butter. Um, but uh, the uh, the building the guitars is kind of a bonus, and uh, you know having same with having the guitars in here for sale. Right. You know, it's just kind of an added bonus. Uh, I didn't plan on having. Uh, a, maybe a storefront like this when I initially started, but this building and this space worked out for it, so that's that's what I did, you know. Right. Uh, so it, it's it's a labor of love for sure. Um, but I'm getting pretty well known in the area and outside of the area of the Quad Cities for uh, uh, the work that I do. I've built guitars for uh, uh, people as far away as Florida uh, and people right here in in Iowa. I've got a few back in the shop that, uh, my messy shop that, uh, are in process and whatever, and a few more at home that I've got glued up and ready to cut out and whatever. So, sure. Yeah. And so before we move on guys, what I want you to do, uh, that has been a huge supporter of my channel. 
So if you have not heard of him, what I want you to do is hit the little down arrow in the description. I'll post a link to his channel. What I want okay. you to do is pause the video right now, go into that, click on his channel, hit the like and subscribe button. He has some really awesome videos. I am very, very fascinated by what he does. I kind of equivocate him to like watching Bob Ross paint. Very relaxing. <laughs> Happy little and trees. Very cool to see a, a true master of his craft. Well, I try and I try and go through uh, the steps that uh, uh, you know what I have to do. So like this one, you know, I kind of went through the steps, just showing. I don't show all the work that I do, you know, but at least you get an idea of what, you know, goes about doing a pickup change on a guitar or doing a setup or whatever, you know, right. uh, or like the guitar that I have to work on later today, uh, here in a little bit when we're done doing these videos is a, uh, uh, PRS that I put an Evertune bridge on. I literally had to route a half a gallon bag worth of wood out of the guitar to put that bridge in there. And I'll post a link and, to that uh, video in the description too, because it's yeah, super I've got, fascinating. Yeah, I've, I've got a whole playlist of that. I think it's six videos in total or yeah. something like that. Yeah, so, I'll yeah. post a link to the first one so you, you guys can save those as well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a labor of love. I love doing what I do, and uh, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Awesome. And when we're talking about stuff that, that Thad builds, I want you guys to realize there are guys that build kit guitars, which are awesome. I know a couple of them. I I've owned, done that before, too. So I you own know. one from uh, Troy Anderson, Anderson Brothers Guitars, who's also a supporter of the channel. He builds kit guitars. When we're talking about stuff Thad builds, he literally cuts out the bodies, does the necks, the fretwork. From all, scratch. Yeah. All himself. So... This is the equivalent of owning like a Fender or Gibson custom shop. That's how good his builds are, and they're literally about half the price. And and that that being said, I, I do anything in between also. So if you buy a kit guitar and you want me to assemble that kit guitar for you or set up that kit guitar or do some custom finish to that kit guitar or you have a neck that you really like and you want me to build a body for it, I do that. You know, uh, you got... Uh, uh, a fender neck and a Gibson body and you want to mate them together just for the hell of it or whatever, you know, we, we can do that. So uh, any, any kind of customization work like that uh, uh, is entirely possible to be done here. I should uh, I should have you build me like an Aldo Nova Les Paul or something. <laughs> With you the, uh, those? Yeah, I, I just, in fact, there's a there's a new video out on YouTube about those that uh, features Aldo Nova. Yeah. Uh, he convinced. From Trogley's yeah, he, yeah, he convinced him to uh, to do the uh, the Explorer style headstock on on two Les Pauls, and uh, he only owns one. The other one is owned by Rick Nielsen, and then Rick Nielsen apparently owns almost every copy that it was ever made. So, right. You know that's kind of cool, but. Uh, uh, so I, I would love to get Rick Nielsen in here. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's from near the area and, uh, still, he still lives up in Rockford and comes oh, to this sure. area quite a bit. One of these days I'm going to try and contact his people and see sure. if I can get him in here. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it would be. So what's, um, I mean, you've had the shop, what, about two years now? Almost two years. Like yeah. That. In, in March, I'll, uh, it'll be two years that I've been in this, uh, in this spot. Um, and I've been doing this, uh, I did did it for uh, before that. I did it for about four years out of my basement, just uh, you know, in my spare time as a uh, uh, for you know a hobby, I guess, and then uh, decided to uh, do this full time. So yeah, I've been here in here almost two years, and it's taken every bit of that two years to you know build my name and and sure. get known enough to uh, to where I've uh, I. I'm sustainable, I guess you'd say, sure. you know, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a good deal. So, uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. I'm going to be here for the, for the long, long haul. I'm going to sign another two year lease here in March and, uh, uh, keep it going. So, so what's the uh, most unique piece you've had in or either for sale or that you've um, worked on? Well, the very first, one of the very first guitars I worked on when I opened my shop here was a 1901 Martin parlor guitar. Oh, nice. Uh, that was uh, my my a buddy of mine. Uh, he's 70 years old, but uh, it was his grandfather's guitar. Oh, who wow. bought it? Bought it. Uh, he thinks brand new. Uh, we're not sure on that 100, percent but uh, 1901 Martin. I get to do stuff like the this. Uh, this is a 1935 Harmony. Uh, it's a round hole arch top guitar, and 
it, it's it's really neat. I just got this thing strung up last week. I still got a little setup to work work to do do to it and lower down the bridge, but it's uh it's a really neat guitar. All the original stenciling and stuff like that. And, you know, I get to do these restorations of these guitars, uh, old Gibsons and Kalamazoo's and Fenders and and whatever else, and it's just awesome to be able to do that. Sure. Um, it, now, what's it, the what's the hardest repair or restoration you've had to do? Uh, or has there been anything that you can't do? I've got one back there that a kid brought me and wanted me to do, and I I, I pretty much have told him I refuse to do it because the guitar, uh, I understand that there was, you know, sentimental value. It was his grandpa's electric guitar. He gave it to him. It's just like a, it's like a late 70s, early 80s, uh, I think Ibanez or something like that. You know, it just looks like a Strat. But... Uh, it got El Cabonged and, and slammed on the, the against the wall or something at a party. The neck, like the fretboard, it's a maple neck with a maple fretboard. It's all broken out up here. The body snapped up here on oh, the geez. whole neck pocket. Uh, and he wanted me to glue it all together and, and try it. And I was like, man, I cannot do this. It, it's just too much work. I'd have to basically rebuild the whole guitar. Oh, sure. Um, now, when it comes to, like, acoustics and stuff like this, you know, I could remake a back if I needed to, remake a top, uh, you know, uh, redo bracing inside, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you're talking a solid body electric guitar that's, you know, at the thickest part, probably close to two inches thick. Right. And, you know, it's busted in half uh, in the neck pocket. There's no fix in that. Right. Uh, that makes and, sense. Yeah, so it's unfortunate that, you know, I can't fix everything, but, you know, it's just like, I, I, I relate guitars with old cars because I'm a gearhead too. Um, you can't save them all. Uh, but parts from that guitar can go to another guitar and you still have some sort of sentimental value, you know, whether I use just the pickups and, and uh, tuners or whatever, you know, uh, to put on another guitar that uh, is similar. It, it still can hold some of that sentimental value. You know, this, this guitar was built with, parts from my grandpa's guitar or whatever, right. you know, kind of thing. So, you know, there, there's hope as far as that goes for everything. Uh, one thing I pride myself on, on, on my work is my headstock repairs. And there's a few of few videos on that on my channel also, uh, and, and pictures on my Facebook and whatever else, uh, my Shoemaker Guitar Works Facebook of some of the, uh, the headstocks that I've repaired. And when I'm done, you can't tell that they were ever broken. Nice. Uh, and I'm I'm talking not just cracked. I'm talking completely snapped off headstocks on like on, some of the pictures you on see Gibson, on Gibson's yeah, where Gibson's people and drop them or whatever. And yeah, they get dropped sure. and the headstock completely snaps off, goes part way down the neck, whatever. Uh, but yeah, when I'm done, you cannot tell, and that's one of the jobs that I really take pride in is doing that. Uh, it's one of my favorite jobs to do because it's rewarding because you're basically taking a piece of firewood and turning it back into a guitar. Sure. You know, uh, so situations like that. Uh, yes, things can be saved. Uh, when you're missing half your neck down here and your body's broken in half in the neck pocket, yeah, that's probably not going to be Yeah, gonna you be might saved. as well get a new guitar at that point. <laughs> right, yep. So what's your, I know you play guitar as well, and you're actually a really good I guitarist. Do, I do, um, but. He's, I, he's better than he gives I've, himself credit I've got, for. I've got so. rheumatoid arthritis, so, like, my limit to playing is, like, 20 minutes. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll play and I'll just, uh, my, my hand will start cramping up really bad and I get that like when I'm polishing frets and stuff you know because I do all my fret polishing by hand so like this guitar it literally took me like I don't know probably a half hour to get these frets polished because I'll do like half the fretboard and then I got to stop because you know my hands start right. cramping up and and uh, got to give them a little while that's actually part of the reason why I what I why I took this job or why I do this job now and not and I'm not a career millwright is because my body just couldn't handle doing the, the millwright work anymore, right. you know, so I had to find something that I could do and make money at and that I was good at uh, in order to be able to succeed. So, uh, you know, everybody's got a family and they got, you know, bills to pay and whatever else. So, And uh, I, I'm curious, this is kind of a side question, not related to sure. the shop, but um, I, I don't think you've mentioned this in videos. Do you prefer the darker woods for fretboards or do you prefer maple? Um. I used to really prefer a maple neck, maple fretboard uh, strap. That that was always my favorite favorite guitar, uh, with like an Olympic white body. Right. Um, but now I've moved 
towards doing the darker words. And if you look at most of my guitars they have that I've built, they have the uh, either a rosewood or a coca bolo or ebony or something fretboard, you know. Um, because I figured out over the years that having that glossy finish on the fretboard and on the back of the neck and stuff, it does not add anything to your playing. It actually takes away from your playing. You know, you sweat, your fingers stick to it, uh, you know, whatever. So that would be, uh, I, I would say I prefer rosewood uh, or uh, that type of wood now to, uh, to maple. I still love the look of maple. Uh, on a guitar, uh, especially like bird's eye or flame maple, oh, sure. uh, when you get a get a you know you got flame going all the way up your neck, those are really cool. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a labor of love. So uh, I, I guess uh, it's all in what you prefer. But that's what I prefer. Like I can get a you know a really good bend on a on a rosewood fretboard, and, and I can on a maple fretboard too. But you you tend to. Uh, uh, get a little bit of resistance there because of the lacquer that's on the fretboard right versus a uh, natural wood so yeah it's uh, it's all in what you prefer i guess so what build have you done that you're the most proud of i know you you built a guitar for uh, brandon Gibbs probably, and probably brandon's on probably brandon's guitar uh that uh that guitar is uh it's a made out of 100 year old iowa barn wood uh, that, uh, the, the wood came out of Muscatine area and it's just, uh, it's really, it's really cool. I mean, it's a Telecaster style. I call them commanders, uh, named after the Studebaker commander. Most of my guitars are named after Studebaker cars. Nice. Just to go along with my gear headedness, I guess. So but, when uh, I have you make me another one of these, what are you going to name it? I'm, I, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got the commander, I've got the Hawk, I've got the Lark. Uh, the Avanti is my V, the Avanti 2 is my Explorer style. So, you know, I don't know, but, uh, uh, I, I'll have to, uh, to figure that out, but, uh, I haven't, haven't named an, an offset guitar yet. Sure. But, uh, uh, well, speaking of names, are you a weirdo like me where your personal guitars are all named? Um. Do you come up with names for them? Cause I know some I. Some of them. Uh, not, not all of them. Uh. It all kind of depends on uh, on the guitar and how much I fall in love with it. You know, I've got oh, a, sure. I've got an acoustic that I've had since I was uh, I don't know twelve years old, and uh, uh, it was old when I got it. So it's an old uh, like seventy one or seventy two Kiso Suzuki nice. uh, copy of a Martin Dreadnought, uh, all solid wood, solid top, solid back and sides. Uh, but it's. Uh, uh, that its name is Katie, but it had its name when I got it. It was one of those guitars that uh, uh, the, the the former owner was like, "It'll tell you its name." And when I told told him that I figured out her name uh, and that it was Katie, he's like, uh, "He's like, that's exactly what that guitar's name was." Nice. You know, so it, it's just one of those things where some guitars talk to you, some don't. But uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's. I don't know. Some people are, are superstitious and like to name every every guitar they have. Some people aren't. So, you know, yeah. uh, they, uh, I don't know, it's just all in your preference, I guess. <laughs> sure. Maybe I'm just a weirdo, but um, uh, Dad just did some wonderful work on Nicole for me. This is my guitar. It is a uh, 2011 Fender Modern Player Series Marauder. And what he did was... Uh, changed out the neck pickup we talked about that earlier and put in the p90 like they originally had on there yeah, and that's a, a legit fender p90 i had to change the cover on it uh because uh, it had a white cover on it then you wanted black to match the rest of the guitar but uh uh yeah it's a legit fender p90 and uh, it really kind of uh opened the guitar up compared to the uh the humbucker gave it a different sound so sure. So if um, somebody needs some work done on like a guitar or an amp or they want you to do a custom build for them, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, I can uh, shoot me a message on my uh, Shoemaker Guitar Works Facebook page. Uh, I'd say you could call me, but my phone's messed up right now. But uh, uh, area code 563-676-2734, you can uh, uh, shoot me a text message uh, that way. Uh, should be getting a phone here within the next couple of weeks. I had to order them from Apple, but uh, oh sure, yeah, it's, that's a pain in the butt. But uh, uh, you know, Black Friday sale got a got a decent deal on a phone. So 
Uh, yeah, look me up either way on that, uh, or you can, uh, right here on YouTube, you can shoot me messages even, so, uh, on my Shoemaker Guitar Works page, so, uh, yeah, get a hold of me, uh, also ShoemakerGuitarWorks.com, uh, is my website, you can get a hold of me through there, there's a contact button on there, uh, so, it's, uh, or ShoemakerGuitarWorks at gmail.com is my direct email, so. And I will post links to all of these in the description below. Send me, uh, send me an email, whatever, uh. Um, and a lot of times, you know, when, even when my phone is working, I don't get a chance to answer my phone cause I'm back in the shop working on a guitar or I'm out here working on a guitar and, or dealing with the customer or whatever, you know? So if I don't happen to answer, leave me a message and I'll get back to you. So, um, I'm a, a one man show here. It's just me in the shop. So, uh, and once in a while, my, my nine year old boy who I'm teaching how to, uh, how to uh, do this kind of stuff like my grandpa did me. So. Uh, yeah, look, look me up and uh, be glad to help you out. Uh, like I say, I've done done stuff for, for people as far away as Florida and uh, as close to right here in, at home. So uh, so I'm assuming you ship then? I, I do uh, on the customer's dime, of course. But uh, right. yeah, I, I ship stuff. Uh, and I've had really good luck using uh, U.S. Postal Service and... Uh, uh, just put insurance on it and it costs, you know, 60, 60 to 80 bucks, depending on where you're at in the country to ship a guitar, but you get insurance on it for, uh, for more than it's worth. And if it is, does happen to get damaged, well, then you get your money and, you know, you get a new guitar out of it too. Right, so, exactly. uh, so one last question for you, sure. Thad, and then we'll end the video cause it's going kind of lengthy yeah. and I want to be respectful of your time. Um, how do you get in your used gear that you have on the wall? Where do you get that from? Well, that, that's a good question. I mean, sometimes I'll buy stuff from people if I have the extra money to do it. Uh, somebody brings in a guitar that uh, they want to sell. Uh, sometimes I'll uh, cruise the Goodwill auctions online and uh, find stuff. I've found Gibsons and uh, Fenders and no-name stuff and whatever on there. Uh, and you can usually, they're, they're auctions, so you can usually get them for a decent price. I've, right. I've gotten a guitar for a penny before. Nice. Uh, um you know, I'll go around to different pawn shops and find stuff. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, th there's all kinds of different ways. Craigslist, Marketplace, whatever. Uh, if I see a good deal and I got the extra cash to buy a guitar to put in the shop, uh, then then I do it, you know. Sure. Um, it's one of those things. Do you take stuff on trade at all? Sometimes, yeah, uh, depending on what it is. You know, uh, right now I've got four black strat or three black strats over there. So would I take another black strat in trade? Probably not. Sure. You know, uh, uh, but you know, if it's something different or unique or, you know, uh, whatever, then yes, I would probably take it in on trade. Awesome. Uh, it, it, you know, you might get, get a little more money out of it. You might get a little less money out of it that way, uh, you know, versus, versus selling it. But, uh, uh, if you're trading it in for a different guitar, well then, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, it'd work out for, for both of us. So, sure. Well, yep. awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys for watching. If you found this video valuable, please like and subscribe and hit the little bell symbol so you know when I have more videos coming up. Also, make sure you go over to Thad's channel. Again, there will be a link in the description. Do the same thing for him. His channel is awesome, very relaxing to watch, and he's been a huge supporter of mine since day one. Um, so, yeah, until next time, guys, thank you for joining me for Shop Spotlight. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.